Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. So Microsoft has released a new visual for Power BI in the month of October 2024 called List Slicer. Now we already had two slicers earlier and this is the third one that has been added to Power BI. Now we're not sure of the reason why we have a new slicer because all of these features could have been built in within the new slicer that was released a few months ago. But it is what it is, we have a new slicer now. I'm going to take you through all the features in detail about the new list slicer these are the different styles that i have created using the new list slicer the first one here has a toggle button when i uncheck a particular category you can see that the background color has changed the toggle has turned off etc and then let's take a look at the style too here i have these square check boxes here and then i also have a chevron here denoting that there's hierarchy within that particular category i have selected a different select color here and when i hover over these categories i have a different color we've seen all of these features earlier as well now let's take a look at the next style here the next style here is basically in rectangle in shape instead of the rounded corners that i have used in my style too and then i also have the radio buttons here instead of the check boxes and then the next style here, the style 4 does not have any kind of selection buttons, neither the radio boxes nor the check boxes. These are just the plain buttons. Also, I will leave a link to the Power BI file in the description below. Please do check it out. So let's recreate these visuals with the new list slicer. So first of all, to enable the new list slicer, all you have to do is head to the file, head to the options and settings under options. Under options, head to preview features and then scroll down and you will find list slicer visual check this box and restart your power bi you should be able to see the new list slicer in your builder visual tab and now let's add the list slicer and bring in the category here into the field i now have the default visual created here and let's play around with this first let's create the toggle slicer that i have created here let's head to the page 2 again and let's look at the different options that are available here under the format section we have size and style here where you get to control the size and style the background visual border shadow etc we've seen all of this before we have the title section here where you can add the title subtitle divider etc and then we have the slicer settings and when you turn off the single select that's when you get these check boxes and when you turn on single select it automatically turns into a radio button and then we also have the select all option here if you would like to let me turn this off for now the next section here is shape if you want to change the shape of your slicer you can do that if you want a rounded rectangle you can choose this from here and the next section here is the layout notice that when i reduce the size of the visual or expand the size of the visual the number of buttons that you see here on the visual remains constant the only way that you can change the number of buttons here by increasing the number of buttons shown for example i can change this to eight here and i can see all the different eight categories that i have in my data set and the next option here is to control the space between the buttons that you see if you want to increase the size let's say if i enter 20 here you will see more space between the buttons here and if you'd want to reduce that maybe you can just enter five here and now you have lesser space and then the next feature here is indentation the indentation works when you have a hierarchy for example if i bring in subcategory here and when i expand this through the chevron and now when I increase the indentation here, notice that the next level of hierarchy that we have here the, or the subcategories here, they indent towards the right. And if you don't want to have the indentation, you can simply bring this down to zero and they will now appear at the same level as that of the category. The next feature here is overflow style. If I choose continuous scroll, which is by default, and if I expand these categories here, notice that I now have a scroll bar appearing here and I can change that to a paginated one if I would like to. And then I have this little arrow appearing at the bottom here which will take you to the next page the next section is call out values you have various states here default hover press selected mixed and you can change the settings here based on the state that you are in for example let's say if you want to change the text to bold whenever the value is selected i can simply state select the state here as selected and then select bold here and whenever i make a selection here the text is now appearing in bold and when i turn this off you will notice that this is no longer appearing in bold and then you can also control the horizontal alignment here if you want to align them on the left center or towards the right you can do so right from here and you can also change the display units the value decimal places etc then let's head to the next section here which is the selection icon the selection icon here when you turn the selection icon off you will no longer see the 
the selection icon. This is something that we saw in style four of our visual here. And when you turn them off, you no longer have any kind, any selection icon. But if you turn them on, you have different settings that you can change. For example, you can select the state and choose how you want that particular icon to be displayed. For example, in my default state, I can change the color here to let's say white. And now you no longer see that because you have a different, you have a white background, but let me change this to let's say this blue color. And you notice that I now have my selected icon appearing in blue. You can also control the transparency if you would like. And then you can also change the state for the selected state. Let's say for example, you want this blue color. You can do so right from here. And then the next option here is layout. You can control the overlay here. You can turn them on and control the overlay. I'm not sure why would you use this. And then we also have the option here. You can change the position of the icons here. You can change this to middle right, to bottom right bottom center, bottom right, etc. There are various options here that you can choose from. I'm gonna leave this at middle left and then turn off the uh, overlay. And then let's head to the next section here. The next section here is the expand collapse icon. This is the icon that I'm talking about. And then you can change the transparency of this icon here in case you don't want to display the expand collapse icon, you can do so from here. And then you can also change the color here in the selected state. If you want to have a different color, let's say for example, you want to have this red, you can do so. You can change the color here. And then let's head to the next section here, which is the buttons. The buttons here basically is the entire button here. In the default state, I have the border on. I can turn off the border. You will no longer see the borders now. And then the next section here is fill. In the fill section, you can change how you want the default state to appear. You can increase the transparency as well if you would like to. And then you can also change the padding from here. You can change this to narrow if you would like to or change this to white based on your preference. And then if you want to change the state of the selected button, you can change this to selected and then change the color here of your choice. You can change this to red. You can, this will now appear in red. Now you also have options like shadow. You have the glow accent bar, etc. You can add an accent bar here and then let's scroll down. You can choose an action bar color of your choice and then increase the width. And you can see that we are now adding an accent bar here on the left. You can also change the position of the accent bar here to bottom and then change the color of your choice. Let's say if you want to add black, you can do so. Now that we've seen all the features of this particular slicer, let me quickly show you how did I create this style one visual, which has this toggle button. So let's go back to the format settings under buttons. If I scroll down, I have this fill option here, which also has an option here to add the background image. When I click on browse, I can add the image of my choice. I've created these two images here within PowerPoint. You can also create this in Figma if you would like. I added three different shapes here to create this visual. I have this rounded rectangle and then I also have this rounded rectangle here and then a circle. I've changed the color here of the circle to green and then I changed the color of this particular background after adding to no fill before I exported this and then I selected this particular shapes here. Right click and then click on save and picture and save this particular file. I've quickly reset this particular visual. Now under buttons here, let me go to fill. And then under background image, I'm gonna select, make sure that you have the default state selected. And then let's click on browse here. And then I have this toggle off button that I have created. I'm gonna select the toggle off here and then change the image fit to fill. And now you can see that we have this toggle off button appearing here, but we will have to make some changes to make this visual just like this one. So let me quickly copy this particular visual here on this page so that we have ne we have them next to each other and then we can see what's happening. So first of all, let's turn off the selection icon because I don't have any selection icon appearing here. Now let's head to the callout values. Let's scroll down, make sure that you're applying settings to the default state and then let's change the horizontal alignment here to center so that you have your text appearing in the center. We can also reduce the size of the visual here. And now let's head back to the buttons here and under buttons, let's change this to selected state, apply settings to selected state. Let's scroll down and now I have the background image toggle off. I'm gonna remove that and then choose the background image. This time I'm gonna choose toggle on image. And now let's change the image fit to fill. And now let's make a selection here and you can notice that our toggle button is appearing on the slicer. I've also changed the shape here. I can simply go to shape and change this to rounded rectangle and leave this at 25 pixels. And we've now created something exactly like what we have here. And then if you would like, you can also increase the space between the buttons here to maybe let's say about 15 pixels. 
And since I have only seven categories appearing here, let me change the number of buttons to show here to seven. And now this is being filled in the visual. Now let's recreate the style to visual here. Now let's add the list slicer. And then I'm going to bring in the category and subcategory. And then I'm also going to change the way how these two visuals interact. I'm going to select do nothing. And then let's head to the format section of this particular visual. Let's go to the slicer setting. Sorry, let's go to the shape and change the shape here to a rounded rectangle because that's what I have here. And then let's scroll down to the layout. I'm going to increase the buttons here to about seven so that I cover all the categories that I have here. Now let's head back to slicer settings. I'm going to turn off single select here. That's how you will get the checkbox. Otherwise, this is going to be a radio button. And now that I have a checkbox here. Now let's head to the buttons section and then let's scroll down. Apply settings to make sure that this is in the default state. I'm going to head to the fill section here. And then from this drop down, I'm going to choose this light shade of cream color here. So this is going to be my default state. And when I hover over this category, I have green color appearing here. So let's change the fill color here. I have this is the color that I have used here. So when I hover over these categories, I have this green color appearing. And then let's change the state here to select it. And now I want to change this to this orange color. So whenever you make a selection here, you have these appearing in orange color. And then I also have turned off the border here for selected state as well as for the default state. I'm going to turn off the border. And then you can see that I've also changed the selection icon color here. So I can change that by going into the selection icon. In the selected state, I can choose this dark green that I have here. And now you can see that I have this exactly matching to what I have created here. Notice that I have this drop down here, which is white in color. You can also change that if you would like to. And then in my selected state, I'm going to make this black as well. Or if you want in the selected state, you can change to any other different color as well of your choice. And now you can see that we have the hierarchy as well. And then if you want to change the indentation, you can do so from here so that your next level of hierarchy moves towards the right. And then there was one thing that I have missed mentioning is that let's say, for example, under food grains, you have three, four different categories, subcategories here. And then when you select one of them, you can see that the main category or the category here has turned into gray color. And then if you want to change the way how this appears, you can do so by going under buttons here. Under default, under apply settings to state, there is a state here called mixed, which means that whenever you have a partial selection here, you can decide how you want the fill to appear. For example, let's say if you want this light blue to appear, you can do so. But when you select all four subcategories within that particular category, I would expect this to go back to the regular color, which was orange, and that is not happening. I hope these issues will be fixed in the upcoming updates. So there it is, the new list slicer in Power BI. I hope you were able to sort of follow and understand the different features that are available within this visual, and then also understand how you can bring in your creativity and change the look of your visuals to suit your needs and requirements. So that's it, guys, in this particular tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.